Laura Ingram is mad that Biden is sanctioning Russia instead of China? Respect. ...of tonight's angle. Tonight, I say to the Russian oligarchs and the corrupt leaders who built billions of dollars off this violent regime, no more. We will leave no stone unturned in our efforts to investigate, arrest, and prosecute those whose criminal acts enable the Russian government to continue its unjust war. You're going to see IRS agents, Department of Homeland Security, FBI, the Marshal Service, all pooling our efforts to run this task force. I love Fiona. As you see things quickly spiral in Ukraine, the Biden administration wants you to believe that they're engaged and taking strong actions to pressure Putin by... It's pretty funny to think that, like, they're holding their hands in sanctioning Russian oligarchs, right? Especially because they have a material interest in continuing trade relations with Russia, which is providing energy and stabilizing prices, uh, energy prices, which would hurt them uh in in the uh at the polls right and also destabilize their economy which is not a risk america is willing to take but what i find to be rather hilarious is like they won't even do that for russia what makes you think they would do that for china china owns us motherfucker fuck you mean dude look at look at dude china and taiwan our over-reliance on Chinese manufacturing in Taiwan got to such a point that we, for once in our fucking lives, decided to, in a bipartisan effort, build a motherfucking microchip factory, okay? In the United States of America. Like, we're literally bringing labor back to this goddamn country out of our fear that we rely on China so much that it becomes a national security problem. Can you imagine? Like, they're doing anti-capitalist shit because of how fucking terrified they are of how much, how much we rely on China. By creating a DOJ task force with a really cool name. By the way... I just wish it would extend to, uh, I don't know, healthcare. Like, oh man, or fuck man... I'm so scared of China. That's why we got to like, I want to trick people. Okay. I want to, I want to trick our politicians into being fearful of China to a degree where they have to build like a, like a nationwide high speed rail system. Like, man, China's really kicking our ass here. Right. Look at that. Since 2008, look how many fucking high speed rail lines they've uh, been able to build all around the country. That's crazy. We should do that too. Right. You know, for, Getting around fast if China invades, or sorry, when China invades, we should do that. You know, they're, I don't fucking know. I, or, 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 uh, <laughs> we should do high speed rail here. Like China's beating us. We should do healthcare here. Complete with sophisticated asset tracking and lots of sexy video. Welcome to television's unchallenged authority on wealth, prestige, and success. It's another dazzling lifestyles of the rich and famous. The four biggest yachts in the Maldives right now reportedly are Russian-owned. In France, authorities have seized a yacht owned by Igor Session. They've actually seized two Russian yachts. That includes uh, the Amore Vero, which is owned by Igor Session, who's the CEO of Rosneft, and also seized by Germany as a yacht owned by Alisher Usmanov. Now, of course, these moves are about as effective as cloth masks on a cross-country flight. Just realized now, we just got finished with COVID like response what theater. Switch them out and now they're the starting up with Ukraine response theater. Now, these are all choreographed moves to make it appear as though the government is working hard to keep you safe and the people of Ukraine Wait, I mean, safe. she's kind of right. She is kind of, I mean, it feels good, though. It does feel good to see, like, a fucking oligarch lose their yacht like i'm sure it's it's uh in a weird way it probably makes people feel good but like she's not wrong about this element of it unless she continues to say yeah put your money where your mouth is and like take the fucking uh take the l on on energy if you're not even gonna get a fucking haircut on on energy it's like it's kind of bullshit right because it is a lot of these sanctions are just to say like we're doing our job. Uh, it's all a ruse for masking a hidden agenda. 
Now, a few points to keep in mind. First, the freezing of assets is nothing new. The Department of Justice has always had the power to deny international criminals and fraudsters access to their own wealth, including any ill-begotten gains. When not abused by out-of-control prosecutors, asset forfeiture laws are powerful tools against crime and corruption. But as we side with the Ukrainian people against Russia's barbaric, hideous invasion, shouldn't we expect our own government to act under established and fair legal criteria? Wait, what? How is... Oh my God, she's saying that seizure of the assets of oligarchs is unconstitutional? What the fuck is going on, dude? No shot. What? Oh boy, almost two years. Hold on, I gotta hear this again. Invasion. Shouldn't we expect our own government to act under established and fair legal criteria? While making a comparison that, like, our government is just as corrupt as Russia's for seizing Russian assets? Wait, what? How? Bro, the worst part about this is, like, if there's one group of people that are completely indefensible in this circumstance, it's the protected fucking kleptocratic oligarchs in Russia. Like, if you were to say, hitting the Russian central bank... And, and, you know, uh, not allowing them to, to fix their currency, right? Or limiting how much they can, uh, they, can, they can stabilize their currency. Taking them off SWIFT for, certain, uh, for all purchases. That's only hurting the Russian people. And it's not actually doing anything because they don't have anything. Like, they, they, have, they, they have no power uh, with respect to, like, you know, stopping Vladimir Putin, Right. No matter how much there's an uprising, your your goal is to starve them out, starve the Russian people out with the hopes that like they can say, stop it, Vladimir Putin, and that will happen. Right? Um, but she's not even doing that. She's defending the Russian oligarchs and their pro their <laughs> what the fuck is the point? Is it just for the sake of defending Russian oligarchs, for the sake of defending rich people, no matter where they are? White House choosing which oligarchs to sanction. Do you start with the richest well, ones or the ones with the closest ties to Vladimir Putin? Uh, we look at one of the big factors is, of course, the proximity to President Putin. We want him to feel the squeeze. We want the people around him to feel the squeeze. Uh, I, I, would, I don't believe this is going to be the last set of oligarchs, uh, making uh, them a priority and a, so and a no focus of our our individual sanctions is something the president has been focused on. Now, is this the governing legal standard now? The feel the squeeze standard? I must have missed that one in law school, but perhaps their new Supreme Court nominee can explain to me how such an arbitrary and vague classification oh. is actually constitutional. Asset freezing requires... Wait, okay, okay, okay. I'm so confused. Uh, like... Like, she's talking about how feckless the, the Russian oligarch uh, asset seizure is, like, or, or how powerless it is, but then simultaneously saying it's unconstitutional. Like, she's literally, she's just, if there was a carve-out for one fucking group of individuals that she's defending in this argument, it unironically comes uh, across as, like, she's just defending the Russian oligarchs? Which is really weird. Like... As uh, it's just like, wait, what? It's unconstitutional to seize their yachts, uh, and it's fucked up to do so. It, it, it's okay. Uh, sure, but like, if That's you're gonna hard. get mad at, like, if you're gonna get mad at fucking sanctions, why would you not get mad at, like, how much the random, regular... 150 million Russians are going to fucking feel the squeeze for no reason when the oligarchs themselves actually do have uh, a level of uh, outsized power and influence. Obviously, no one has influence over what Putin has to, Putin could do. But if there's people in his fucking immediate circle, like they have somewhat more of a, a, a say in what happens. So she's not even bringing up the other side, the actual fucking victims in the situation that have nothing to do with, with the actions or have no power to, to change the, the, the outcome. Wild to, to fucking find a way to surgically remove every fucking uh, uh, immoral 
a consequence of our actions here and hyper focus on the one instance where it's like hyper focus on the one instance where it's like kind of appropriate i've never heard i've never seen a take like this before it's like sanctions for everyone but the oligarchs <laughs> credible allegations of criminal action or civil fraud. Maybe that's here. Maybe it's not. It also means that you have to find the assets, which are often hidden in shell corporations, partnerships, or things like LLCs. Now, what, is, what does this require? Well, this requires time, manpower, forensic work, and significant resources. Earlier that you want Putin to feel the squeeze and the people around him to feel the squeeze. How does the administration feel that these sanctions could actually change his behavior? What we're talking about here is seizing their assets, seizing their yachts, and making it harder for them to send, uh, you know, their children to uh, to colleges and universities in the West. Um, these are uh, significant steps that will impact the people who are closely around uh, President Putin. Okay, these significant steps also take international cooperation and time. And we know time is not on the Ukrainian side. You just heard Elena speak out. Even if we could expeditiously freeze every oligarch's luxury assets, would that really stop the suffering of the Ukrainian people that's happening right now? Do we think Putin's going to wake up and say next week and he's going to get up there and he's going to say, you know, that chalet in Gestart was so important to me. I think, you think I'll call Zelensky and send the troops home. Now, more importantly, we have to ask, is there a possibility that this could all backfire and make things even worse for Ukraine? Wait, what? What? What is she saying? She's saying we shouldn't. We shouldn't seize the oligarchs' yachts because they'll, they'll piss off... We're going to piss off Putin further. You can't, on the one hand, say it's feckless and ineffective and then simultaneously say it has the exact opposite. Is anyone in the Biden administration even gaming any of this out, you wonder? So let's be real. As satisfying as it may be to see these 400-foot luxury liners... You'd be surprised how often you sound like Fox News. Bro, this is an insane takeaway. Like, this is an insane thing to state. Okay? And also, I sound like Fox News because what? Because I do Russian accents? Shut the fuck up, idiot. When I talk about sanctions, I talk about how it is not... If you're going to go all-encompassing, you have to go in an area. You have to go to an area where it actually hurts you as well. But Americans and the Western nations do not want to do that. That's why Belgium wanted to do a carve-out for fucking diamonds okay that's why Let's italy wanted to do a carve out for sanctions on luxury items because they wanted to keep selling fucking you know italian shit to the russian dudes to the russian wealthy people either if you're going to do sanctions and i am conflicted on them first of all i do not give a fuck about seizing the yachts of oligarchs fuck well, yes i not only want that to happen i don't give a fuck that it's unconstitutional i want to seize their apartments so that we can, you know, take it, give it to the government, and then have the government uh, turn it into, uh, you know, socialized housing. Straight the fuck up. Sink the yachts if you want. Sell them. I don't know. Fucking scrap it for parts. I don't give a shit, okay? I don't care about that at all. What I do care about, however, and I don't care about the constitutionality of it, too, but what I do care about is... How the average Russian who's living in Russia, who has no fucking proximity to Vladimir Putin, who has no say in what ends up happening in Russia as far as like Russian foreign policy, how much that person is going to get fucking destroyed. OK. And that is incredibly frustrating. If you think me and Laura Ingram are on the same side of this argument, you are not understanding my position at all. You are not understanding my position at all, and you're not understanding her position at all. You just are thinking, oh, someone is not offering full-throated uh, support and actually asking some questions about what the consequences might be on random individuals that have nothing to do with anything, and you think it's the same as Fox News. They're not... None of the... You are actually a fucking Russian puppet. Yes. Yes, I, you, I am a Russian puppet. Being a Russian puppet is when you say, fuck the Russian oligarchs, seize all their fucking assets, and give it to the people. That's me being a Russian puppet. You know, everybody in Russia, 
I'm sure everyone in Putin's circle loves that. That's a take that they are probably on board with, dude. Good fucking point of view. Good PO, good POV, my friend. You really nailed it, okay? Search for Washington Post. Why the enormous scale of financial pain being inflicted on Russia worries some in the West. The article says the same as you. Again, always remember, civil asset forfeiture is appropriate if the state is seizing your property and seizing your fucking money that you have in your pockets in your car or whatever the fuck under the suspicions that you're doing illegal activity because you're too poor to fight back because you haven't bought the government. If you buy the government, if you are a wealthy oligarch, doesn't matter if you're Russian, doesn't matter if you're American, you've already bought the fucking government, so they will constantly, endlessly pontificate, endlessly go back and forth on, is this appropriate to do? Should we not do this? If you're, if you're fucking poor, cops will pull you over, they can, they can do civil assets forfeiture on your ass, okay? Good luck trying to re recover any of that, okay? The amount of, the amount of like, uh, you know, you have to hire a lawyer, the amount of fucking paperwork required for you to get back what you... Uh, what you earned, okay, is is ridiculous. But you're poor, so it doesn't matter. But when the rich, when we take from the rich, oh man, oh brother, I mean, we really got to think about the, the feelings. Okay? Because they're too powerful. Seven She's right to defend go. the idea that America shouldn't be able to arbitrarily police the rest of the world's finances. I mean, she's not wrong on that, but it's wild to argue against that position, argue that understandable and, and correct position by taking the worst possible stance you can on it. Do you see what I'm saying? If you're going to talk about sanctions, which are collective punishment, okay, which is collective punishment and unjustifiable, an act of war, okay, that truly cripples countries, cripples and, and hurts citizens, it kills millions, okay? in certain instances, like in Iraq. Hey, Chad. Okay? If you're going to talk about that, because with the, with the off chance that it might actually create uh, some kind of rebellion within that country because a starving populace is going to turn around and push back against their government, that instability, that volatility, will ultimately, potentially, hopefully, fingers crossed, will lead to Everyone some kind of rebellion that, uh, that we want. That is a, a, that's really shaky grounds to just fucking starve out millions and millions of people. Okay. So I agree with that. I see that. I am usually very much, very, very anti sanctions in most of the circumstances. And I've talked about it time and time again. Sanctions on Cuba, the embargo, completely unjustifiable, morally abhorrent. Venezuela, unjustifiable, morally abhorrent. Iraq, unjustifiable, morally abhorrent. Iran, unjustifiable, morally abhorrent. Okay? Completely, completely fucking unacceptable. But those are countries we can bully. We put sanctions on Yemen while they're under while they are literally under occupation from Saudi Arabia using our guided laser laser guided systems and our missiles. Okay? An actual genocide is occurring in Yemen right now, right this very moment. And we put sanctions on the effective Yemen government, the Houthis. Okay? Not good guys, certainly. Ones who are fucking fighting against Saudi Arabia currently. But that's just how it is. That's the fucking effective government. They're defending themselves, right? Now, these are... And, and we just added additional sanctions in that, in that situation. While the people of Yemen are starving, we added additional sanctions to that. To them. Afghanistan. Completely unjustifiable. Morally abhorrent. But when you talk about Russia's actions as a government, as a fully developed nation state, a superpower with nuclear weapons, how do you deal with that? How do you actually fucking deal with that? The world is powerless to do anything as we watch Russia just roll over fucking Ukraine. Okay? They're throwing human power at the problem. A lot of Russian soldiers are dying. And we're just watching. And there's nothing we can do, and there was nothing we could have done from the start uh, other than, you know, uh, allow nukes to get fired off and World War III to begin, I guess. So we did this, uh, we did this sanction thing, okay? 
And I do see that uh, there's when you have nothing else to do, when you when you don't have anything else going on, when you can't do anything else, like I understand you're powerless. You have to do something. But even then, the most protected in that form, in that form of sanctions, which Russia should be well protected against. Okay. The average Russian citizen suffers in a way that Russian oligarchs never will. The only place that you could actually have some kind of outsized power, some kind of genuine regime change or anything is on the, on the oligarch side. But we will never do that if they are well protected against the sanctions. So, Laura Ingram not mentioning any of that and instead saying it's unconstitutional to seize the yachts of fucking oligarchs it's totally fucked up. What do you mean? And it's going to backfire on us is crazy to me. If the goal of sanctions are to try to get the people that you are targeting with the sanctions to get angry enough that they fucking fight back against their government, then the Russian people have no say. They have no power. You know who does have a say and power? The oligarchs, to a certain degree. <sighs> Sanctions are acts of war. They are not an alternative. They're warfare. And in many cases, they're a genocidal policy. I agree. I've already mentioned that. Like I said, Iraq, Afghanistan, Venezuela, Cuba, Yemen. Absolutely ridiculous that we have sanctions on any of these countries. Ridiculous. Unjustifiable. Uh, North Korea. Morally abhorrent uh, behavior. Anyway. Padlocked. Chasing down oligarchs is like swatting away mosquitoes when a cobra is about to strike your leg. As the Anglo has been telling you, this has been from day one, the biggest threat facing free people everywhere is China. Russia would... Fucking insane how much nationalism and anti-Russian sentiment there are in my country now. They're advocating violence against Russians. I mean, well, you know, I get why. Borger, your country is in a unique situation, okay? Uh, the reason why they're saying that is because, you know, you're in Georgia, motherfucker, obviously, of course. Well, I mean, I don't know if that's who you meant or that's what you were talking about, but, you know, that's... I get why. I get why people in Georgia are like, yeah, you know, fuck every Russian person. Anyway, let's continue. Would not be able to do what it's doing now without China providing a financial cushion, buying its energy, buying its wheat, and so on. China's decision yesterday to abstain from a UN measure demanding the immediate withdrawal of Russian forces from Ukraine, that sent a clear message that President Xi is fine with Putin's campaign of terror. Fox News is always like, hey, don't focus on Russia. Focus on the real problem, which is China. And that's exactly what this entire video was leading up towards. And I was right once again. They love, they love being like, don't, don't target the Russian oligarchs. They're going to be our allies against China soon. This begs the question. If they really want to get at Putin's funding source, why is Biden not clamping down on Chinese corporations and Xi's inner circle? About 340,000 Chinese students studying in the United States right now, by the way. Biden's... Bro, what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? You guys are psychotic. I really wish we could literally just ban conservatives, okay? I want to put a sanction on conservatives. If you're a reactionary conservative, you go to jail. I want to seize your assets. I want to take everything away from you, and I want to fucking deport you. I don't give a fuck where you go, just not here, okay? We should just take every conservative and ship them off into... Like, we should do Liberia, but for conservatives, okay? straight up like we should have just a country where we're like that's the designated conservative zone florida brings me back to my florida proposal 100 percent. take all the walls that are surrounding the southern border and put all of those walls on florida and we just ship every conservative into florida okay wow. all of them take them take them all put them there take all their other assets give them enough to survive in florida that's it insanity insanity she's talking about fucking She's talking about 400,000 Chinese students. Bro, what the fuck do they... What are they... Are they agents? Are they actually agents? Are the Russian students also morally culpable for the actions 
Are you in any way ever going to take your legitimate fucking moral culpability for all of the reactionary blood libel you have engaged in over and over again when it comes to every unjustifiable, morally abhorrent action that the American state is engaged in? Holy fuck. Do you go to jail because America did what it did in Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran? That was before your time. Vietnam, Korea, Nicaragua, Chile, Bolivia. Huh? Do you go to jail for that? You should. You should. You're defending that shit too. Fuck me, dude. These people are fucking insane. Holy fuck. This team brags about plans to put the squeeze on Putin and his pals as the Biden administration gives hugs to Xi and his. No, don't worry. All the f So we can't get them upset at us. Yeah, right. Well, the fact is, without Xi's Absolutely. support and tacit approval, Putin couldn't have pulled this off, period. In the years leading up to this moment, NATO missed an opportunity, and so did the U.S. Maybe could have avoided this nightmare unfolding before our eyes. And we gave up our energy independence and oil and gas, and then Biden and Germany and power- Literally advocating for the cultural revolutions of China now? Yeah, just for, just for reactionary, just a little bit. Just as a fantasy. Obviously, it's never going to happen, but, like, it'd be cool if we could just, like, re-educate conservatives, yeah. Powered Russia with Nord Stream 2. Meanwhile, the globalists propped up China by letting them into the WTO and offshoring our manufacturing millions and millions of American jobs. The globalists. Dude, they're literally the capitalists. The globalists? The fucking people who own capital. The people you run defense for every fucking day. The people that you run defense for by, like, shifting the blame over from those very same people who wanted to improve their profit margin by fucking uh, moving manufacturing overseas, okay, and completely destroying labor unions, you are a, a mouthpiece for the fucking oligarchs, okay? You can't just say, oh, like, these guys are the bad oligarchs, whereas my oligarchs that I'm defending all the time are the good oligarchs. You can't just say globalist and, like, slap a fucking... Uh, you know, slap a, a different association. Motherfucker, those are the same people. Who do you think funds Fox News? What do you, you think Rupert Murdoch is like a, not a globalist? No, he's just a capitalist. They're all capitalists. Also failed to strike a deal with Russia over NATO expansion. Maybe that was possible. We'll never know. And speaking of trade, right now, even with this humanitarian catastrophe that we've been documenting on Fox News all day long for several days now, aided and abetted by China, both Russia and China tonight still enjoy the same trading privileges with us as the UK. Bro, she would literally advocate nuclear holocaust on China and Russia if it meant... If it if she started seeing the price of gas go up a little bit further, okay? Like, you are a selfish, angloid piece of shit, okay? You do not give a fuck about Ukrainians. You do not give a fuck about Russians. You do not give a fuck about anyone but yourself, okay? You would literally advocate to glass the entirety of Russia if it meant that gas would be cheaper. Shut the fuck up.